Hello and welcome to our percent error video. First, I'd like to talk about what percent error is. So it's a lot like what you might think if you were looking at the name percent error. You're looking at the errors that we make, when, specifically in this unit when we measure. And really what it comes down to is how wrong we are with those errors. Are we really close to the right answer? Are we really far away from the right answer? In general, if you're close to the right answer, you want to have or you will come out with a low percent error. Meaning, when you do the calculations to figure out what your percent error is, it's going to be low. Okay? If you're really far away from the right answer, then your answer when you calculate percent error will be high. Obviously, we do not want a high percent error. You would rather have a low percent error or the best possible percent error, which would be zero, which means you were zero percent wrong. The best possible answer you can get when you do percent error is a zero because it means you actually got the right answer. So that being said, now that we know what percent error is, I think we should take a minute and look at the formula. So moving on, here we go. Your percent error formula is up here at the top of your screen. Um, it says here difference divided by the actual value times 100 equals percent error. So let's take a look at each of these things. Actual value over here where it says AV equals actual value um, is the correct answer. So we say the actual value which means the right answer, it's objective, and that will be given to you if you're asked to do a percent error problem. The difference where it says subtract the numbers is the difference between your answer and the actual value. So those are the two numbers that you're subtracting, the actual value and your answer, whatever it is. You subtract those two numbers and get the difference. That's step one. So that's the first thing you should do is subtract your two numbers. Then once you have that answer, you take that number and divide the whole thing by the actual value. So that would be step two. And then, once you have that answer, you multiply that by 100. So that's step three. So this is really a three-step process that's actually a lot easier than it sounds once you get the hang of it. So let's go ahead and let's do a practice question. Let's imagine that I measured my window for curtains. And the measurement that I got when I measured was 90 centimeters wide. However, the actual value of the window measurement was 88 centimeters wide. What's my percent error? Well, let's go back to our first step, which was to subtract the two numbers. So I'm going to do 90 minus 88. That's my difference. So remember up here, we said the difference is where you subtract the numbers. Here we go. 90 is one number. 88 is the other number. I subtract them here, and I get an answer of 2. Whoops. I get an answer of 2, which should be over here. There it is. 90 minus 88 equals 2. Now, my second step is to take that number right here and divide it by the actual value. I know my actual value was 88 centimeters, so I'm going to take that 2 and I'm going to divide it by 88. Do that on the calculator. My answer comes out to be 0 0.02 once I round it to the nearest hundredth, which is typically the number that you round to. Sometimes we'll round to uh, the nearest thousandth. You should follow the instructions and, and do whatever you're told to do in the directions. So in this case, my answer, I round it to the nearest hundredth, which is 0 0.02. And then I have to go ahead to my third step and multiply the whole thing by 100. So let's go ahead and do that. And my answer will then be 2. So my overall percent error for this equation is 2%. So here you can see all the steps laid out. Step 1, 90 minus 88, where I take the difference between my numbers. Step 2, as I mentioned before, where I divide the answer to my difference by the actual value. And then step 3, when I take the answer to that equation and I multiply it by 100 to get my final answer, which is my percent error. Hopefully that all made sense to you. We're going to go ahead and look at another problem here. And I'd like you to try this one on your own. This one should be on your handout for your homework if you're watching this to accompany the homework and not as review. If you have questions about this one, you can bring it into extra help with you. Um, 
there's a possibility also that your teacher could go over it with you during class. But this is the question that would be on your homework. I just want to go over one quick thing. I'm not going to give you the answer, but I just want to remind you. The first thing that you have to do is find the difference between the two numbers. So that's going to be these two guys, right? The actual value is given to us here. So we know what's going to go on the bottom of this formula when I do my division. So you find the difference, take that number, divide it by my actual value, which is 115, and then once I have that answer, it gets multiplied by 100. So without giving you the answer, I basically walked you through it. If you still have questions, like I said, bring it into your teacher for extra help or any Science 7 teacher, I'm sure will be willing to help you. And hopefully that helps you understand what percent error is. Have a good day.